Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5 and here we are with the lander prototype and we are going to continue this mission to the extent that is possible. So this is sort of testing what can be done with the Magni launcher and if if we can't get this to the surface of the moon and back up again that basically demonstrates that we will need another launcher. We'll, we'll need a larger launcher because this is the payload capacity of this launcher. And so, uh, yeah, anything more than this. And at the very least, what we would need a launcher to do would be to send a lander to the moon, get it on the surface, and get it back into lunar orbit again. Uh, well, the lander will get into lunar orbit again. And so the lander has to have that kind of fuel. That's a minimal. Whether or not the lander has the fuel to get back to Earth is a separate issue altogether because we could uh, send a separate uh, launch with the return vehicle and that would be fine. And they would just do a lunar orbit rendezvous. And uh, the only difference between it and Apollo in that case would be to have the two launches instead of one it would still be a lunar orbit rendezvous. Uh, well, of course, we are only sending one Kerbal, so that's a huge difference. But, uh, yeah, let's just plot for the moon for now. Okay, I'm having to do single ticks of the scroll wheel very, very carefully here. But now I'm getting it, finally. Okay, 60 kilometers is fine. Okay, a uh, little bit skewed. Not bad, actually. Not bad. Okay, um, we don't have any reaction control on this, so we're just going to have to hope that we're going to be swinging back around to this side. Mm, and maybe we'll be lined up properly. All right, time warp. Uh, I don't need that display. Uh, probably we're going to be actually pretty far off. This is reading my total delta V wrong here. Hmm. Something else slowed me down. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't even realize an alarm had been made. Okay, good. And yes, it's actually past time for it. Now... Oh, I sense a tiny bit of reaction. Come on. I think the command module, well there's no command module. Uh, no, there's, I'm, I'm totally delusional, I don't think there's any reaction control at all. Well this is going to be keeping us to surface, that's not right. Yeah, if, if there was any reaction control that would actually have changed our heading and orientation and it didn't. Okay, so we've got this little problem. That's very stable. Okay, so we can light it. Or... Oh, it's never been ignited. Okay. Uh, okay. Quickly, quickly. Thankfully, we're not burning too much Delta V at this stage because... Um, because it's so darn heavy. But it's not really turning us at all. Uh oh, there's no gimbal on this thing? Oh shucks. There's no gimbal on this engine. Okay, well, that's just not gonna do. Okay, so... 
Total mission failure. <laughs> this this engine doesn't gimbal. That's strange. Would have definitely thought that a top stage engine like this would gimbal, and I think the other RL10s do. Hmm. Alright, well, uh, sorry about this, folks, but this guy is not going to the moon. Uh, I'm as surprised as you are. Fortunately, we do have a little readout on the total delta V, but that doesn't help too much. Uh, yep, yeah. so back to the VAB, and yeah, we need to work on this quite a lot. I'll tell you what, though, I think this lander could get back, uh, could, could make a s brief soft landing on the surface. In other words, if it didn't have to do the descent on all of its own power, it could probably do the last bit of the descent and then get back into orbit again. What we really need is some inner stage here that will decelerate it uh, from uh, orbital speed around the moon and get it to the surface. Now we could use this third stage and uh, it's got uh, probably about 1,300 meters per second to spare but that's really not quite enough and on the other hand also it's very difficult to relight it. There's still a chance this might work so let me try it one more time. It's a really tight margin thing though and I'm not too sure I want to trust a Kerbal to it, but this is a very efficient system. Just talking about it for a sec, this this RS-68A of course is much more efficient than any of the engines that they had during the 60s. Um, this is uh, the engine that's at the bottom of the Delta IV vehicle and its ISP is relatively similar to that uh, to the Space Shuttle main engines, uh, so not too far off from that, burning the same fuels of course. Uh, the difference being it has much more thrust than the Space Shuttle main engines. Uh, this entire launcher is about a quarter of the size of the, of the Saturn V rocket. And it delivers about a quarter to the moon. Uh, some of the inefficiency, of course if I say that the RS-68A is very efficient, the inefficiency is with the solid rocket boosters, of course. So uh, the combination of the R68 plus the solid rocket boosters basically gives us the same efficiency as the F1 stage of the Saturn V rocket. We are of course using a J2 in the second stage, so uh, no substantial difference there. Uh, and the, um, what you got RL10 is about the same in terms of uh, efficiency. Actually, it's a little bit better on efficiency than the J2. So, I guess, I mean, uh, putting an inner stage probably isn't the best way to go. What we will need, though, is some more RCS power, and we can't just have that be on the, on the top. I think we need to sneak an RCS pack, uh, the service module. And we need to configure everything to the same... Well, this is Aerozine N204. I don't think these can be configured to Aerozine N204. No, they can't. Then perhaps we should just keep them Hydrazine, or shall we use MMH N204 as well? Hmm. Probably... Well, MMH N204 has the better ISP. A hydrazine has a much lower one at this uh, tech level. Of course, there are further tech levels, but if you take a look at all of the possibilities, MMH N204 is the best. Okay, so... Unfortunately, it doesn't show up as one of the configurable options here. I think it's just 50-50 or close to that, and we don't need so much. Unfortunately, that uh, 
that doesn't do much for our delta v, but in other words, uh, it's not good for our, de our delta v, but oh well. Mm. 2,151 was less than I was thinking for this for this top stage, and I haven't even added the RCS stuff to it yet. What's that about? Well, now it says 2,834. Huh, I figured that out. Okay, so I'm not getting very good readings for that. Alright, well, I'll, I'll still slap on some RCS to it. Um, probably need a inner tank here. It's still a service module tank, same as this, but best to keep it separate. Uh, I guess we could just sneak some MMH into here. It's a little bit confusing, but... So instead of, uh, let's say, 50 units of aerozine, I'm gonna put 50 units of MMH. Right. Well, they like to snap on there, so I'll just move the lights higher. Okay. Now we've got some reaction control. Now let's line the ports up, just for sanity's sake. Hope that'll be enough to get this turned around. All right, so that's the plan. We'll once again try and see whether this thing can get to the moon. I really haven't planned much space for a ladder, have I? Oh well. Okay, let's do this quickly. I'll, I'll probably uh, skip to orbit. By the way, the other one is still in orbit. I didn't uh, erase it or anything. Um, that's against the rules as far as I'm concerned. So it's still there. And now we're going to be setting this one up. Okay, we just did the other launch recently. So we're at a relative inclination of 4 degrees. I think that's good enough to go. We'll end up in an inclined orbit at the moon probably. But that's not too bad. Uh, I mean, I'm not intending to fix my inclination uh, by much, so a little bit of an inclination to our orbit uh, probably wouldn't uh, cause any problems on this mission. For uh, for the full mission with the lunar orbit rendezvous, it would, of course, uh, if for some reason it complicated the way that the lander would have to return to the orbiting craft. It might not, though. It would just require the proper timing of the launch for the lander. Okay, so throttle is up, SAS is on, and oh yes, the uh, I guess the food, water, and oxygen are going to drop off eventually. I have to fix that sometime. Anyway, uh, but uh, hopefully they won't do too much damage. Let's just get on with it. I'll control this manually this time rather than have Smart ASS just to see how stable it is without Smart ASS. I'm going to briefly turn on RCS before we go any further to see whether it can activate properly. Uh, I would have expected it to be able to kill our rotation. Uh, well, let's see. Okay. I'm not seeing it fire. It's not draining any RCS. I don't think our RCS is operational. And that ISP... I don't understand the ISP. I, I think I've misconfigured at least one set. But... Yeah, they're not firing at all, regardless of which set it is. Okay, uh, this isn't right. I should have checked the... Okay. 
Mm, sorry about this, folks, but uh, clearly I've messed up the, uh, the RCS system here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this burn back, uh, burn as it descends back into the atmosphere here. And so this will all explode. And unfortunately, it's because the RCS ports aren't done right. I'm a little bit tired of this. Okay, hopefully you'll bring this down. Well, anyway, uh, let's actually just revert flight in this case. Now, let me make a few extra changes while I'm... Well, okay, let me focus on the RCS first. Why wasn't the RCS firing properly? I've been having trouble with the RCS. I mean, I always seem to forget something about it. Okay, MMH N204, that's fine. This is an MMH N204 tank, so why wasn't it firing? Does it only fire when it's a, its own stage? I know it only drains from its own stage. No, this is wrong. This, sh this was misconfigured. But it's not changing when I click this. Okay. Maybe I should just use Hydrazine, because this might just not work at all. Or maybe it was not firing because these are configured to do two different things. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. I think there was some sort of conflict between the two. Okay, um, this might not be the best launcher ever. What if we could drop off these these tanks? Uh, but the, 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 there's no real good attachment point to this. Yeah, I wanted a decoupler, but I don't think I'm gonna get one. What what about those radial engines? Can we create a second stage with these? Thirteen is not bad. While we're trying to be super efficient, maybe this is the way to go. What if we could create an uh, inner stage here? Drop most of this off. Well, clearly the food is not working out right here. So let's say we create a mid-level tank here. I mean, I don't like the UDMH N204 thing. That's just another N204. So we're using Aerozine N204, we're using MMH N204, and now we're using UDMH N204. That's a little bit iffy. Uh, the ISP on this is very iffy compared to, say, the Ascent engine for the Apollo mission. But if we could ditch all of this stuff, maybe it's worth it. So let's see now. So, if we're just talking about this, that's not good enough. Wow, it has to be that big. One thousand seven hundred and forty four is still barely scratching the minimums here. What's the that's probably the minimum we can get away with to get off of the moon surface. Now the lander stage is gonna be helped by this stuff, so we could substantially decrease its size. Let's see what its mass is right now. Twelve point three. Okay, everything's gonna have to be fixed on it though. One 
1,690. That's definitely good enough for landing. 10.9 tons, not bad. This is very Kerbal looking. Now if only I could get some RCS port that would run on UDMH N204, that'd be nice. How much is a reaction? Uh, th these are pretty weak reaction wheels. They're, I mean, compared to the normal tin torque that the stock reaction wheels give, these are pretty well nerfed. I, I guess I don't feel too bad about adding one in. Landing on the moon is hard enough without something like that. Uh, I don't know if that's the right place to put it, though. It might be our, my only place. Um, perhaps it'll look a little bit better if I can shift shift the batteries down. Okay, now we're looking a little bit more like something that's gonna actually return from from the moon. Maybe you could make this a little bit smaller. Because we're carrying this RCS tank as well. I think I need at least uh, 4,000 there. This is very minimal. Okay, I'm going to go with this, and I also want the retro boosters to to clear our yeah separatrons will do. I'll worry about the food, water, and oxygen uh, once we get a uh, crew container up there. Since we're going to also uh, when we remove the remote control unit, we'll replace it with the necessary supplies. Okay, well let's try this now. So here we go again, continuing to test what the minimum requirements are to send a Kerbal to the moon and return him safely back to Kerbin. And obviously we are focusing on the sending him to the moon and giving him a way to get back into orbit around the moon part first. Uh, so SAS is on, throttle is up, and everything looks like a go. So let's get this going. Same inclination situation as the previous launch that I reverted, so no problems there. I'll once again uh, just use manual control to get into orbit. This is st not heavier than the previous launch, actually. Uh, despite the despite the additions, it's not really that much heavier because we lightened up the bottom tank as we added the top one for the new stage. Oh, I hope those don't have some weird thing. I doubt they have something special that they need to use to light them, but. I guess we'll find out later. Hmm, I suppose I should quickly check whether RCS actually works. Yeah, it's firing. Okay, boosters are away. I am considering replacing the solid rocket boosters with perhaps some sort of liquid fuel boosters. Uh, 
and maybe that would increase our payload to orbit enough to make this slander not have the tight margins that it has right now. So that's a consideration. Obviously that's only if we don't want to make this entire thing much larger than it is right now. Okay, getting ready for first stage out. Okay, that's the main engine cut off. Okay, proper separation for the first time. And off we go. Now we are going to get an extra boost out of the second stage I think. But it's sort of a question of what direction will it be in. It might be in... it's probably got to be in completely the wrong side from where we'd actually want it to be. That's unfortunate. Technically the J2 can relight. Maybe we should hold it, hold the fuel and attempt to relight the J2 at the proper side instead of uh, just boosting it any other way. Of course, uh, boosting it this way still will give us an advantage once we reach the moon because, well, not that much. No, I don't think it would. Okay, uh, we will have this stage just sort of tag along. If it can restart, then we'll restart and use its 184 meters per second of delta V. If it can't, we'll just dump it and uh, continue from there. Uh, so 158 by uh, sorry, 258 by 255 on the orbit, which is pretty good and probably burning out slightly away from our uh, descending node with the moon. I'm just going to accept the situation without return here as long as we get a uh, reasonably low periapsis. Still very touchy. Not very good since of course our engines don't throttle and we can't activate the one that does on the lander until we are pretty much crashing into the surface on the other side. Okay, well, we're not going to be able to get that accurately anyway. So we seem to be a little bit far from the maneuver node. Don't actually know how far. Actually, uh, turning on RCS now could be dodgy. I mean, turning this huge thing. Well, we'll see. Uh, let's have it turn to us to maneuver node. And, yeah, just give it a little bit of indication of that. And uh, we'll let momentum carry us over there. I did this with the mission to Jewel in a recent recent stock episode. Assuming we are turning in the right direction. Just gonna let it drift. Okay, so that little burst of RCS brought us pretty close to our marker, but not quite there. As you can see, I ended up being a little bit off. Gonna let uh, RCS, not uh, RCS, SAS. Maybe the tiny little 
reaction wheel at the top of this thing will bring us closer? I don't think so. Probably just, just have to wait until we can light the engines. And hopefully this one will gimbal us to the right direction, if we can light it still, after the 26 minutes or so. Okay. J2 is still stable, so let's light it. Okay, it's out. We can separate it. This one should also be stable now that the J2 is fired, so no problems there. And uh, yeah, I think we're clear to go. Now the gimbling provided by the reaction wheel should at least uh, keep us stable and pointed in the right direction while this is firing. I'm surprised, uh, why didn't I even notice that this didn't have a reaction power on all the previous missions? Yeah, not reaction power, uh, gimbling. Okay, this is severely not right in so many ways. Uh, okay. Again, this estimated burn time has to be wrong. And that's simply because... I mean, I guess it's taking our current acceleration and extrapolating from that. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing it. Uh, because, uh, again, our stage time is this much. So, basically, in the amount of time that this says estimated burn, we probably burn about 4,400 meters per second, or maybe 4,300, something like that. Way more than the 3,000 we need. Uh, I would say that the estimated burn time is more like uh, 9 minutes, maybe 10 minutes at most. So I don't know. Seems weird. So we're about halfway through our burn and now you can see that the estimated burn time is now behaving a little bit better and in fact uh, about a three minute discrepancy between the two now. But the, we'll probably have about three minutes remaining in the stage in other words. And and yeah we'll, we'll have plenty of fuel too. Uh, I don't know whether a part of it was just the fact that we used the second stage which is very very helpful but probably also the Oberth effect has helped us a little bit in having a lot more fuel remaining than I thought we would have in this stage and that's going to be helpful on the lunar side of things. Uh, we still have two relights left uh, guaranteed to us so that will be helpful and one relight will probably be to get us into orbit around the moon and the second relight will be to uh, get our descent uh, slowed down so the critical thing will be to make sure that we do our descent while we are in communication with earth of course making sure that we've got a good communication situation before we start that phase of things off. But otherwise, it looks like our Delta V situation is excellent. In fact, uh, considering that orbital velocity around the moon is 1600 meters per second, uh, we'll have 1600 left over in this stage. And, uh, but of course, we're going to have to burn about 400 in order to get into orbit, maybe up to 600 so there's also that but then again we've got uh, the 1600 in the lander stage as well so actually we're we're pretty well off on fuel at this point so I'll uh, check back in with you once we get close to the end of this burn okay we're getting close to the end of the burn I've turned smart ASS off and SAS on so that smart ASS won't start randomly 
trying to follow the node as it wanders which will make uh, trying to get this done as accurately as possible difficult. Again, engine is on or off, so not much chance of uh, any fine adjustments without uh, using the RCS, which I would like to avoid as much as possible. Ah, darn it. <sighs> Went too far. Okay, well, we'd have to use RCS to turn around anyway, so I guess it's SAS off, RCS on, back us up a bit, RCS, right, keep going, right, and... There we go, that's the trajectory I want. Uh, not too bad, not too bad on the RCS burn. Okay. So, uh, well actually we don't need to even go into that view. We, we've we got our main antenna pointed at the Earth and our auxiliary antenna out, so let's just get over there. Oh wait, electric charge depletion. How are we oriented? Uh, we've basically got our rear end pointed at the sun, don't we? A little bit hard to figure things out right now because uh, we really don't have too much. Should have put more solar panels on the pod actually. I should have put solar panels everywhere. SAS off, I think, now. We'll save some of the battery. What is our battery situation like, actually? One day. Okay. First, let's see the sun come out so that I can point at it properly. Oh, wow. We're going to be stuck on the dark side for a while. Okay, that's as good as that gets. Um, so, let's see how much charge does this one take? Well, that's not really useful on the trip towards the moon. We'll reactivate it once we get over there. But that'll give us enough charge now. Okay, really should have figured that out ahead of time, but... Okay, um, I think we're good and stable here. Let's continue. Okay, we are in the vicinity of the moon. We are currently connected over to Earth. No guarantees about how long that'll be. Our periapsis is totally different now. Uh, I think it's time to get out the shorter range antenna just to make sure everything is as connected as possible. I'm going to assume that we're going to have connection. Is that a fair thing or not? Twenty hours. Yeah, I think if you look at how the Earth will rotate in twenty hours, I think they'll end up on the other side and in communication. So, if we could focus view on the moon for a sec here. Then, at periapsis, we'll burn for orbit. Somewhere in 20 is a lot more than I thought it would be. We've had some fuel boil off on the, en route, but nothing horrible. Oop. 
Hello, camera. Okay, so as we see, Earth is in view, so that's good. Now, the question is whether our fuel is settled. Yes, it is very stable. Okay, excellent. So there's nothing to worry about, except actually we're we're probably going to accelerate pretty quickly. We're at the bottom end of this stage, so I don't think it's got to take two minutes. We only had three minutes left in this stage anyway. I think we can get to within one minute of the maneuver node. Oh, that was quicker reaction than I thought I would get. Okay, so interestingly, uh, Remote Tech is once again delaying some of my commands, like the RCS command, but not other commands like the throttle. This is very complicated. I don't need Smart ASS doing anything right now. We'll stay retrograde. So, and it's uh, delay my SAS command. So, difficult to plan ahead when some of it is inconsistent. Now, the the Earth is obviously on the right side for uh, well, the launch command is on the right side for us. So we can make an immediate landing, and I plan to do such a thing. So what we're going to do is right around here retro burn and I want to exhaust this stage so I want to see what kind of effect exhausting the stage will have pretty much it's going to force us to land immediately and I hope I'll have enough time to slow down further with the lander stage otherwise I'm going to be in trouble might be necessary to do a little bit of a radial thing just to prevent us from crashing into the surface I'm going to uh, ignite RCS turn off SAS and tell smart ASS to point at the node Now obviously I actually do need to add RCS to the top of this, I haven't done so. But the uh, return portion, not the return portion, the ascent stage needs RCS in order to be able to dock with whatever target it has. Or we could have the target do the docking, but that's a little bit trickier. Though in terms of mass, that would be preferable because then we wouldn't have to carry the docking RCS with us down to the surface. Okay, fuel should probably be settled. Let's see. Yeah, it is. But I'm going to use the solid boosters anyway because we're not going to be able to use them for anything else. So... First things first, I'm going to transfer whatever fuel we have here up to this stage. Oh, it wasn't really drawing from this. Oh, yes, it was. The MMH is gone. Okay. And I doubt there's any N204 depleted there, but... That's a little bit less MMH than I was... I think I was hoping for 50, but then I scaled down the container. So I guess we lost some from there. I'll have to scale it back up again. Our fuel margins seem to be much better than I thought they would have been. And maybe Oberth effect because I didn't take that into consideration at all. Something of that sort. Okay, otherwise our fuel tanks on the upper stage should be full. No. This oxidized this oxidized tank doesn't even tell me what fuel it has. Is it empty? What's with this? Hmm, I sense a little bit of a problem here. Well, uh, 
well, while we're, while we're at it, let's get some N204 in here, shall we? Well, I hope that doesn't unbalance things, though. I mean, what if it if it's only going into this tank and not the other tanks? But then I can't even access these tanks. I've done something wrong. That's not good. Oh dear. Okay, so I might be having... Uh, things are going so well, too. Alright, I'm going to ignite the solid fuel boosters. And we'll use those to slow down first. Uh, that was... Oh. It's time delay. Oh dear, I've made a mistake. I've pressed spacebar too many times, I think. Okay, it looks alright. Um, right. How are we? No particular reason not to ignite now. Alright, so let's do that. And I'm gonna take manual control, thanks. But this does gimbal. But it doesn't have tweakable gimbal configured. Huh. But why wasn't it maneuvering before? I don't know. Something had it stuck. Somehow. What's the stage time on my lander stage? God, I don't even know if I have all the fuel I want there. Oh, two minutes. Oh, wow, its thrust to weight ratio is pretty high. And that's probably because it doesn't have the right amount of fuel. Um, Alright. Yeah, it definitely doesn't have the right amount of fuel. We are not carrying the fuel that I thought we were supposed to be. And that's because I uh, detached those those portions and reattach them I think and they didn't fill up with the fuel properly I'm gonna get rid of this with uh, such a quick burning lander stage I can aim directly at my retrograde vector Of course, if they were all full, maybe we wouldn't have been able to get as far as we did, I don't know. But then again, we would have the fuel up here, so it would make, uh, make up for the fact. Okay, let's uh, ignite the remaining solid rocket booster. And I have to wait for the 1.3 second delay. Just a little boost. Okay, I'm gonna throttle down now. And then... Well, we gotta lose this fuel here. We've got some fuel there, but no, e not even any tanks in these. Oh well. Sent that message. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get gear down. Don't really have stage time, but that's current throttle, so that's expected. Now, in the custom info window, I saw something interesting. Suicide burn countdown, right. So let me see now. Uh, to stages, I'm going to add that. I think that might be better than uh, time to impact. I keep doing that. Time to impact or move. We'll go off the suicide burn countdown and see if that's accurate at all. Keeping in mind that uh, time to impact is a little bit more than that. Right. But actually, we don't have enough Delta V to actually slow down with this stage. Ah, uh, nuts. And that's because some of our tanks are empty. So... 
and our uh, this antenna is on this stage we'll only have the short range antenna to send information back let's see let's let's try and do some some science here no no good we've done this stuff before okay well we'll try and make a landing as much as possible What was our stage time, given that we're lacking fuel here? 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Alright, so we'll go with the suicide burn countdown. 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Let's wait. Okay, we're past that. I think probably that was a high estimate anyway. Right, so I'm going to light it. So the current plan is, I'm going to try and make a landing using the ascent stage. And then transmit the information back. I don't see what else I can do right now. Well, maybe I should start the suicide burn when it gets to zero. Ah, I think that's right. So... All right, so now we can start our suicide burn. See now, if we were short of N204 at all, we could pump it from this stage down, but uh, really the limiting factor is the, actually the aerozine. Well, I wonder how well the suicide burn countdown accounted for the fact that I would have to stage here. Probably it did not account for that at all. And of course the different delta V, and not the delta V, the thrust to weight ratio of these rockets. That'd be a bit of a complicating factor here. Okay, well, here we go. I've sent the stage signal. Uh, we still have connection. That's that's the first very important thing. Now, all I have is that little reaction wheel helping me to control this. And are we slowing down quickly enough? Oh, I didn't even check if these engines throttle. Oh, no they don't. Okay, so they don't throttle. Can I restart them? I didn't even check that. Uh, well, let's get some more angle there. Yes, we can reignite them. Alright. Still got a suicide burn count down there, and so we'll just wait until we hit zero on that before I start uh, burning again, since actually we're, we're just on or off with these thrusters. And But no, I have to wait until we've got two seconds left in that suicide burn countdown because there's a two second delay, perhaps. Perhaps. Looks like I have pretty timely control over this thing. What I don't have is actually my display showing my true altitude. For some reason I closed that. Fortunately, a hundred ignitions on this is, you know, sufficient. There we go. Okay, we are on the surface. Let's do some science. Heck, we are connected and everything. It's log seismic data. Don't get to do that very often. From the Midlands, 
minor quake on the surface. Transmit that data, please. Fortunately, we put the batteries on this part. Okay, science is added. Log gravity data. Um, doesn't have any effects. Uh, barometer. Can't be done. Temperature. Uh, has already been done. So, does I, I guess we had landed in the Midlands the previous time. Oh, well, I, I can't do that. I need to activate the data recorder first. So after this, we'll see how far into orbit this thing can get. It's not going to get into orbit, but, you know. Just testing. And really, if only those tanks, once I had uh, placed them back on again, had actually been full, we probably would have been able to bring this back into orbit quite safely. So that's, that's nice to know. I think this two stage uh, doing it uh, with two stages like the like the Apollo mission landers probably is the best way even though I don't quite like these rockets that are either off or on but then again uh, if they're just the ascent stage instead of trying to land with them the fact that they are just like that is fine also the low ISP is of course not as good as I would like, but heck, you can stick them on radially, so what can you complain about? And they got us down here safely. Okay, let's see the land readings then. Oh, okay, it's not biome dependent, it's moon surface and that's that. Okay. No need to worry about that. Let's turn that off actually. Deactivate data recorder. And yeah, let's just uh, burn for orbit and see how far we get. No point uh, leaving this here, I think. Well, I think the efficient thing to do would be to wait until apoapsis at this point. Which is not very long, as you can see. We'd probably have to be going in the opposite direction, not this direction, judging from the way we approached. If we were going to approach the same way, though. Okay, pretty close to apoapsis. Let's continue. Okay, so that's it for our fuel, and this is as close to orbit as we got. Not as bad as it looks actually, but still pretty bad. Uh, altogether, I would say the mission is sort of a success for a very bad approximation of success. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel a little bit cheated by the fact that uh, they just took out the fuel from the fuel tanks that I just temporarily removed and reattached. Um, if I had that fuel it would probably have worked out a little bit differently. Um, we probably wouldn't have had the J2 to burn an extra 200 meters per second. That that stage, I, I honestly didn't even expect that to have anything left over so I was sort of surprised that we had that at all. And that was probably because of the lighter payload. And then, of course, the the third stage had a lot more juice than I thought it should have. And again, because of the lighter payload, um, I think I would have preferred to just have the fuel in the payload. That probably would have been more efficient. Tough to say, because you see, the third stage has a very high ISP. Whereas the payload's own engine, the descent engine, 
uh, did not have a very high ISP so I'd actually have to probably do some math to figure out which would have been better keep the fuel in the third stage or have the fuel in the payload and uh, that would determine whether this how close this was so you're gonna have to tune in next time to find out whether I think we can conduct a manned mission to the moon on the Magni launcher as uh, you know with the model that we've seen here or I think we need a larger launcher so I haven't actually decided that yet it seems to me that I'll have to take a look at this and check out some of the math involved before deciding um, that must be a very heavy decoupler the vessel mass is two tons even though this is just one ton this is an empty tank these hardly had any mass at all this must be a pretty heavy decoupler huh I'm gonna have to look into the mass of this decoupler in particular might be causing us some trouble alright so on all of that Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.